What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and in this video I want to talk about the RRSP and the first time home buyers plan and how you can use them together to your advantage. Here is everything you need to know. Let's go. Okay, so just starting from the top here, the RRSP stands for Registered Retirement Savings Plan. And this is a special account that the Government of Canada has put together for Canadians that has specific tax advantages. Now, I know that it says Retirement Savings Plan, but this is an investment account. If you have money in this account, you should be investing it because that is how you're going to get the best return on your money. Otherwise, your savings and the money that you put into this account is going to be worth less every year that goes by because of inflation. Now, if you're wondering, how do you set up an RRSP account? It's fairly simple. You can go to your bank here in Canada. You can go to pretty much any bank you want. And you can open an RRSP account. You can also open an RRSP account with investing platforms like Quest Trade or Wealthsimple. I personally have my RRSP and my TFSA on Quest Trade. I think it's the best platform, but that's just my perspective. Now, the tax advantages behind the RRSP. Let's talk about those because that's a real benefit here. And so basically the way that people like to describe it is that the RRSP contributions are tax deductible. Now, basically what that means is that if you contribute money into your RRSP, so if you put $10,000 into your RRSP account. It doesn't matter if you invest it or you just leave it there, you should invest it. But even if you just put that money into your RRSP account, that means that you have made a $10,000 contribution and that $10,000 is going to go to reducing the amount of tax that you have to pay. Now, how it works is if you make $150,000 per year and you contribute $10,000 to your RRSP, it is going to lower the amount of income that you have to pay tax on by $10,000. So if you contribute $10,000, it reduces your income by $10,000 and you only have to pay tax on $140,000. Now, let me show you exactly what that looks like with an example. So here, I've just gone to the Wealth Simple calculator and put together an example here where somebody lives in Alberta, they make $150,000 per year and they did not contribute to their RRSP account in this year. In this situation here, somebody would have to pay $45,094 in total tax on that income. And so they're making $150,000 and they're giving away $45,094 in the form of taxes and they did not contribute to their RRSP. Now let's take a look at what would happen to somebody that did contribute to their RRSP. So this person here makes the same amount of money and they live in Alberta. So 150 G's and they live in Alberta, but they made a $25,000 contribution to their RRSP. So they had a good year and they put $25,000 into an RRSP account that was either set up with Quest Trade, with their bank or with Wealthsimple. And because of that, because they just contributed to the RRSP, they received RRSP tax savings of $9,370 and that reduced their overall tax bill to $35,725. And so just by contributing your money into the right account at the right time, such as the RRSP, you could save over $9,000 in taxes. And that is the advantage of the RRSP is that when you contribute money to the RRSP, it reduces your income and the amount of money that you have to pay taxes on. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that the more money you make, the higher the tax bracket you are in. And so if you know that you're going to be making a ton of money next year, you might want to hold off on contributing to your RRSP because next year when you make a whole lot more money, you're going to be paying a whole lot more taxes on that final 20 or $25,000 that you bring in. And if you can use your RRSP to bring that down, you can save yourself from paying taxes in that 35 or 40% tax bracket. However, if you only make $50,000 per year right now, it might not be worth it to contribute $25,000 a year to your RRSP because you're only paying taxes at a rate of probably around 25%. And so the more money you make, the more advantageous it is going to be to contribute to your RRSP. Now, how much can you contribute to your RRSP? Well, to answer that question, it's pretty simple. Your maximum yearly contribution is 18% of last year's income or $27,230. So whichever one is lower is going to determine how much money you can contribute to your RRSP each and every single year. So if you make $100,000, the next year you can contribute $18,000 
into your RRSP. And if you want to know exactly what your limit is at, because it does go up each and every year that you're making money, you can go to mycra.com. You can log in and they will tell you exactly what your contribution limit is for your RRSP. Now, a couple of things that are a little bit unique about the RRSP is that you can contribute to a spouse or common law RRSP, and you can contribute to your RRSP up until the age of 71. Now, how do you pull your money out of the RRSP? That is a very good question, and there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Number one is through the first time home buyers plan. That's what we're gonna dive into here in a minute. Number two is through the lifelong learners plan, and that's where you can withdraw money to spend on yourself and your education. Number three is by converting that RRSP into what we call a RRIF or a RIF. And that is basically an automatic payment schedule where it is going to pull money out of that RRSP and give it to you in retirement and basically be your source of income. So that is what happens when you hit retirement and you convert your RRSP into a RIF. That is how you basically pull money out when you hit retirement. But until then, if you are not at retirement age and you want to withdraw those funds and you don't do it through the first time home buyers plan or the lifelong learners plan, then you are going to have to pay taxes on that money. And it usually comes at a rate between 10 and 30%, depending on how much money you withdraw. So make sure that you are well aware of the taxes and penalties when you withdraw that money out of your RRSP and make sure that if you're contributing money into that RRSP, you either don't need it or you can use one of these strategies to get that money out without paying taxes because those penalties are fairly steep. Now let's dive in to the first time home buyers plan because this is really, really exciting and this is just an amazing opportunity for Canadians. So the first time home buyers plan allows you to withdraw $35,000 from your RRSP without penalty or taxes for the purchase of your first home or the building of your first home. And so this is really exciting because like we said, you can contribute money to your RRSP and you basically don't pay any taxes on that money. Then you can use the first time home buyers plan to withdraw that money and again, not pay any taxes, not pay any penalties on it and you can use that towards the down payment for your first home, which is absolutely amazing. And so the only thing that you need to do once you have that money in your RRSP is you can go online and you download this form, the T1036 form. You can get it from the Canadian government website or you can also get it directly from Quest Trade or Wellsimple. It's very, very easy to use. It's very accessible and it's a very common practice for all of these platforms. But you fill out this form, you send it in, and they will allow you to withdraw that money, which is absolutely amazing. So the benefits here are that you can save up to $35,000 for a down payment without paying any income taxes on those savings, which is absolutely amazing. Number two is that you can also combine that benefit with your spouse for up to $70,000 in savings, which is absolutely amazing. And lastly, when you're contributing that money into your RRSP, you're either gonna save money directly on taxes or you're gonna get a very nice tax return and you can use all of that money that you're saving or that you get back towards that down payment, towards a different investment or towards whatever you want. And so using the RRSP and the first time home buyers plan just has so many tax advantages that it's absolutely amazing. Now there are some drawbacks that you need to be very well aware of. Number one is that you have to return that money into your RRSP in 15 years. So if you pull out $35,000, you have to return that $35,000 to your RRSP within 15 years. It's basically broken down equally on a monthly basis and you have to contribute that money back into your RRSP. However, if you're planning to retire at any point and you're planning to go into retirement and you're planning to save for retirement, then you should be doing that anyway. So realistically, if you're saving for retirement, this drawback right here shouldn't be any issue for you anyways, because you need to be saving for retirement and that just meets the requirement right here. Now, the second drawback to this is that your repayments back into your RRSP are not tax deductible. So if you pull out $35,000 and then you repay that $35,000 right away, that repayment contribution is not tax deductible. So you need to be well aware of that. And then thirdly, the money has to be in the RRSP for at least 90 days. So if you see a house that you wanna buy tomorrow and you think you can go through this strategy, you're wrong because that money has to be sitting in your RRSP for at least 90 days before you withdraw it. So it's not something that you can do right away. You do have to plan for this just a little bit. And lastly, it must be a qualifying home. Now the category and the criteria of a qualifying home is very, very broad. So you should not have any restrictions there, but make sure you at least look at the requirements 
in your area before you go through with this process. Almost every home will fit in as a qualifying home, but you should just do a little double check. So here is my strategy. This is what I plan to do, and this is what I'm currently doing right now. So I am investing $35,000 into my RRSP with Quest Trade. I use Quest Trade because I think it's just the best broker and investing platform here in Canada, especially for anybody that's serious or using large sums of money. Well, simple just doesn't give you the control and access that you need, but Quest Trade is my personal favorite and you have more control than you will ever need on that platform. Secondly, you need to invest that money and you need to do it safely. If you're going to put 35,000 into an RSP, go out and buy bonds, go and buy an index fund, make four or 5% every single year so that you're not losing money to inflation. That's really, really important. Your RRSP, I know it says savings, but it is an investment account. You need to treat it like an investment account. Now, when I contribute 35K to my RRSP, I'm going to get a nice hefty tax return and I'm also going to invest that money. Then when I am ready to purchase a home, I'm going to withdraw the money from the RSP using the first time home buyer's plan. I'm gonna purchase that home and then if I withdraw $35,000, I have to repay that over the course of 15 years. That equals out to about $195 per month that I have to contribute back into my RRSP. So I have to make sure that I can follow that schedule and as long as I'm planning for retirement, that should be absolutely no problem. And then lastly, I'm going to keep all of the money in my RRSP invested into index funds or tech stocks. I am doing that because the RRSP is an investment vehicle. You need to be investing that money that is in your RRSP when it is sitting there. And so the index funds are going to be your safest option. And the tech stocks are definitely going to be much more risky, but they do have the, uh, the option for a little bit higher returns. Now, if you're interested in trying to open up an RRSP, I highly recommend Quest Trade. It is probably the best brokerage and the best platform here in Canada. I use it for my margin trading and day trading. I use it for my RRSP and I use it for my TFSA. So I highly recommend it. If you're interested in signing up, there's a link in the description to this video that will give you $50 in free commission. So you can try out the platform, open an account and make some trades completely free. It won't cost you a single thing. And I personally think it's the best platform for real traders and investors here in Canada. Well, simple just has too many limitations. So I personally prefer Quest Trade. Now, like I said, there's a link in the description for Quest Trade. There's also a link in the description for my Stock Market Fundamentals course. It is completely free and it is a 10 hour course that will walk you through everything you need to know in order to get started investing your money in the stock market the right way. I'm gonna walk you through how to place the trades, how to analyze the charts, and how to read financials so that you can actually analyze your own companies. There's over 10 hours of content, over 8,000 students that have already taken the course, over 325 reviews, and I promise you it'll be the best free resource that you can find online. The link is in the description down below to this video, and I would love to share it with you. Now, if you get any value out of this video, remember to click that like and subscribe button. I sincerely appreciate it, and good luck with your investing, good luck with your trading, good luck with your RRSP account, and if you go through with any of this, please make a video about it or send me an email. Let me know how things go, and I will document my journey over the next few years so that you can see the entire process from start to finish. See you guys in the next video.